there was a thing about um I had to do NXT, I had to get a medical. Um and then we finally get there and I was told oh, there's probably not gonna be a chance today. And I'm like, ah, oh, it is what it is, but Dan wasn't accepting that. Um Dan went and found out like the spot against Elias was from a local extra in Orlando. Um <clears throat> so he went up to Blue and says, uh, look, like we can use this guy for the next set of tapings. Nathan flies home in three days. I'd really appreciate it if you give my friend an opportunity. And uh and Bloom said, Well, if he if he fucks up, it's on you. And Dan just said, Yeah, sure. The, the biggest punchline of my life being like you've always wanted to do this. You believed in yourself, you fought for everything when people would tell you no. And then in something out of your control, just one sentence. I'd done my promo videos, I'd done my photo vignettes, and then I've even wrestled a couple matches for WWE at this point. And then one sentence, I'm sorry, Nathan, but you you've got high blood pressure. You need to go calm down otherwise we can't clear you. And then that was it. Like within that sentence. And then as the weeks went on, I'm like, yeah, that was just in my mind then and then all what I could focus on is the only thing I ever wanted in life I've fallen short of it. So your Thomas. goal was your goal was always WWE to become a WWE yeah. superstar. And then and then that was the that was the other thing. Like I was I mean when I was growing up I was a big WCW fan as well, but like obviously WWE won that war. And like I knew I catered my wrestling style to WWE. I know I am I'm a, I, I'm a sports entertainer. Like I, I know that that's what I do because that's what I grew up enjoy enjoying and what I wanted to be. So I'd I'd, I'd catered all of what I do, I put all my energy and like sacrifice so much um for that moment and then yeah, just and like there was nothing like it literally did like in that sentence like after that like things just watered down and it, it didn't really and it was uh it was just having to deal with that after was was the worst thing it, like I, I fully believed in this and that was all i wanted to do so when that was taken away from me and then the reality then of when i was getting them jobs going ah, if you did not fail that medical for wwe this would have been very different and that was when that hit me. Because I the initial year of it after in 2016, so it was 2016 I filled the medical for them when they offered me the NXT UK spot. And then 17, obviously, brutal. Like, just trying to get through that year, just with that on my mind. You know, I slumped into a real bad depression. And then that was when everything from 2016, failing that medical, not getting to NXT UK, not going like the, the the biggest punchline of my life being like you've always wanted to do this you believed in yourself you fought for everything when people would tell you no and then in something out of your control so your your kind of brush that you had with with WWE that I know you came to a you know mm -hmm. a screeching halt with when you got the news about your high blood pressure what was what was your experience like you you got a brief foray into the WWE machine what what was that like? Oh, match up um, expectations. Yes and no, mixed, I guess. So, firstly, like when you do that first try, I had my first tryout in uh, April of two thousand fourteen, and when you're in that ring, you're looking at the raw set, you're looking at an arena, and you get to wrestle in that ring and do all the drills and stuff like that. I could, you, I, I at that time could not be more motivated. Like, that's everything that I needed at that point to say, you're not going to throw up and you're going to work your ass off. And it, it, it does live up to that expectation from that you're, point. You're within touching distance of your dream, aren't you, when you're, you're yeah, seeing Yeah, exactly. It. And, and, and just seeing it all, though, and seeing, like, you know, like, how people are, like, getting ready for the show, and you're just like, yeah, I want this. I want this so bad. Like, so in that aspect, it definitely lived up to the expectation. And when I got to wrestle for them the first time, which was November of that year, the Liverpool Echo Arena, and I was like, it was me and Justin Sizem against the Usos, and it was a dark match for SmackDown. And it was, it was, it lived up to the expectation. I can tell you that. Like I remember just walking out of that ring, going, "My God!" Like I just, as brief as it was, like it was just an enhancement match for them. But like, I just lived my dream. Like, like I just wrestled in the WWE in an arena mm -hmm. as well. It was like I think it was like eight thousand seat arena. Don't know how many they would have had in that night for SmackDown, but. Like, oh my God, like this, 
it was just the greatest thing. But then there's, there was elements of it that I, I certainly didn't like. Like, I love me a lot of the artwork. And I know it's different to when they're doing TV to when they're doing live events, but I don't like a script choreographed, like written down where they need to be. And I get it's for the cameras, and I get why WWE is like that. It is, I think what a lot of people forget about is why Vince McMahon probably pushed the word sports entertainment so much is that he uses wrestling as a theme to sell merchandise on a TV show. It's not necessarily a wrestling show. Like, and Ed, when you kind of realise that, you look at it in a different way and you understand and or you forgive a lot of the what people might have frustrations with. Why do I have to tell an agent what corner I'm going to be in and this and the why I've got to turn here and all that stuff. But, you know, they're trying to create the best TV product that they can to show you in the best possible way that you can be. So I get it. But it doesn't mean that I necessarily enjoy it. And that side of it was a bit like, ah, oh, that was eye opening. Didn't necessarily like that element of it. But if this is what I want to do, I will learn that and I will adapt to it because this still looks like the coolest job in the world. Then you meet some of those producers and just one or two of them are pieces of shit. And uh, yeah, I won't, actually won't mention that person's name, but. Um, when I was really going through it in 2017, I was in America again on another tour, and I went to uh, I went to NXT. I was invited there by Mr. Regal, um, just to you know check in, see how I'm doing, and things like that. And there was one of the agents, producers, and I'd worked with him in the past when I'd been an extra WWE. Um, knew he wouldn't remember me, so I made a point of saying, "Hey, Nathan," shook his hand. Was what, Nathan? Nice to meet you, sir. Whatever. Everyone just walks off and I'm just thinking, mm. yeah, dick. And then later on, there was another interaction with him. And I remember speaking uh, to a friend of mine who was working there at the time about it and saying, like, what was that about? It's like, it's just like that with everyone. And that didn't make me feel better about it. And it was also one of the things that actually helped me get over at that time because it was mid 2017 when. So after the, the, the failed medical, kind of helped me get over that. Mm. So I was like, wow, the fuck. So I want to go into work and be spoke to like that every day for no reason whatsoever yeah. I think when I'm already in a stressful environment. There's two Why aspects to that. Going... One, one is, you know, is that his equivalent of hazing? Going back to what we were talking about at the start, you know, is it a generational thing? Is that what it's like until you got the respect? I just remember, yeah, after, after that meeting with that producer, just... Again, something else that just didn't live up to expectation. I was mm. just like, man, you'd feel at a professional level when you're entrusted as the role of an agent and a match producer, you'd at least be polite to people in the building that you might not know. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't even in wrestling gear. I was just in like smart gear. So I could have, for all I, for all I knew, I could have been an investor. I mean, you probably would have been clued up that I would have been an investor or what, a sponsor or representative of something or whatever, if that was the case. But I just, I just, yeah, it didn't sit well with me. I just, again, going back to how I am with people, like, I just don't treat people like that. No. Like, um, and it the just, other, yeah. The other thing just, I've learned over thing. the years is I've also learned the fact that you've got to give grace to people. You know, you, I, I've had interactions like that. You don't know. You don't know what's going on in his life at that point. You, you know, it's hard. Is it? that? It, yeah, leaves, yeah. it leaves a sour note, but I, I have learned over the years. And because I've been that guy to other people, maybe not quite as rude as you're describing, but I've certainly been her offhand not giving people the the full um you know kind of eye contact or respect that they need in a situation and i think you just have to get like grace sometimes it could have been anything going on in that guy's life and unfortunately at that exact moment you came in was a really bad moment you don't know it's well that, i mean that was what i was hoping to rest on but then when i heard i was like <laughs> that with everyone i was just like wow cool yeah um but yeah no i mean it, just to answer your question like there was things that did not live up to expectation in that regard um and that was you know somewhat disappointing but again it didn't taint anything in the sense of like i don't want to be here like it did obviously after when i was like well focus instead of focusing on you know you, you've missed out on it focus on the fact that you don't have to wake up every day and be spoke to like you're a piece of shit like there's that. There's a positive to take away from this. Yeah. Uh, you still get to wrestle. And, it, you know, there's on certain cases on those indies, I'll probably be wrestling, getting to actually wrestle more than I may have been doing if I was under contract at that time. 
Like there's so many variables, like you said, and I might have been a guy that had been pushed, but then I very well easily could have been a guy that was, we're not going to use it, we're not going to use it, we're not going to use it. We keep showing up to TV and, and get to watch everybody else do enjoy this and you don't get to do it. But you can but I still got to do all the Indies. So you no, know, it was just weighing it up and, and to like I say, going into two thousand eighteen it was a lot more positive because of those experiences. You can at least say that you believed in yourself and you were good enough to get offered that contract. So how many people from Hull England who are five foot ten are gonna to get to say that? 